I was in I was in a conversation today with um somebody over at the over the, at the baby shop and um Kwok introduced me to a friend from work. Mm-hmm. He said he'd been telling him telling him about us and what we were doing. And so I was talking to him and uh he 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 and he and his um girlfriend, you know, they're talking about marriage. Mm-hmm. And so I said, Man, marriage is easy. <laughs> he said, I ain't never heard. It. He said, You you believe that? I said, Yeah. I teach it too. I said, Yeah. I said, I said, he said, You believe that? I said, Yeah, yeah. I believe that. He said, Man, I ain't never heard that. I said, That's why you start need, that's why you gotta start hanging around us. Mm-hmm. He said, I ain't never heard that. Well, guess what? How does faith come? By, by hearing. hearing. By hearing. Yeah. By hearing. Mm-hmm. A faith-based marriage comes by hearing faith-based language. Yep. Mm-hmm. If you don't hear faith-based language, then you're gonna have divorce-based language. Right. And you're not gonna believe marriage is easy. Mm-hmm. How can it not be? Jesus ain't gonna give us nothing to do that's hard. Right. But we, we, we there's a process. And, and mm-hmm. I said, I said, bro, I'll take you through the process. You don't worry about it, man. It be easy, man. All I do is win, 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 no matter what. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Win as One, Gospel Love Edition. I'm Caitlin. I'm Leslie. I am Aramis. And I'm Coach D. I was going to go. I know, I know, I, I know, but I know how you like it. So. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And today we are uh, continuing our conversation from what we've been talking about in Coffee in the Morning Club uh, this past week, which is um, a faith-based marriage. What it is and, and just letting everyone know, you know. I don't know. We go from there. <laughs> <laughs> How to live? It's like, like what we've really, really been dealing with just like the reality. Like, and it's been a wake up call. <laughs> right. It's been a wake up call. Folks, probably that thing. I'm picking yeah. up a scoop. I scoop. I scoop. Right, right, right. There folk, you go. Folk been, it's, it's been a wake up call to people, right? Like, like when it comes to uh, <laughs> believers, mm-hmm. uh, you know, Christians, and those who who confess Jesus as Lord, whether or not they really have a mm-hmm. faith based marriage. Like, mm. like the Lord gave us that concept to really establish a foundational ground for what what a faith based marriage really is. The divorce rate in the church is just as high, and in some instances, higher yep. than that of the world. Mm-hmm. How can these things <laughs> be? <laughs> because we don't really have a faith based marriage. Um, a lot of our, we talked about this, a lot of our Christian counselors get their education to counsel Christians or faith-based couples, marriages, from the unrenewed mind of society's educational structure. Right. Which is law-based. Which is law-based. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is, which, well, well, there's three aspects. When you, when we talk about the divorce culture, um, that produces these law-based marriages, it centers around three things. It centers around fear, despair, and doubt. Mm-hmm. Those are the three things it centers around. Fear is the opposite of love. Despair. Despair is hopelessness. Mm-hmm. And doubt, obviously, is the unbelief. Unfortunately, I was in the... Um, there's been times where I've heard couples express their unbelief in their spouse. And that's heartbreaking. Mm-hmm. If there's anything that breaks the heart of, of, of one who says they love you and one who you say you love, it's to say you don't believe in them. Unbelief is so, is so poisonous to the soul and the spirit of man that it's the one thing that can keep you from reconnecting with God. Mm-hmm. The idea of the unpardonable sin is, is really comes down to unbelief. That's the one sin that God can't, can't pardon, uh, pardon one of. That's unbelief because he's a faith God and everything God mm-hmm. has ordained was ordained to operate by faith. Yeah. Marriage is a faith based adventure. Mm-hmm. That's what it is. Like you can try to make it what you want it to be, right. but it is a faith-based adventure. In its fullest form. In its fullest and its most complete form. Right. Mm-hmm. You can't get out of faith. Um, I'm sorry, out of marriage. What God intended for you to get out of marriage, unless you're doing it based on the faith of the operation of faith and the components and the tenets and the and the attributes and the characteristics of faith. It, mm-hmm. it won't happen. 
what we've been trying to do is coach and counsel couples into doing something that was designed to live in the rich soil of faith by law. Mm. And that's why we have 60% of divorces in America and just as high a rate. I can understand the world now, Mm -hmm. but just as high of a rate of divorce in the church. And unless we fix that, um, the church will never live up to being who it was we called to be. And so we've been dealing with that in our coffee in the morning club, uh, which is our community of couples that gather three days a week just to hear something different. I was reading today, uh, second Corinthians two fourteen mm-hmm. talks about how the, the, uh, I'll paraphrase. So a yeah. man in the flesh can't receive what a man in the spirit can receive. No, you can't do it. You can't. It's, it's, it's not possible. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So if we're, if people are, you know, out here learning by the law and, and going by the black and white of the Bible and not, you know, not understanding that, you know, that there's a there's a spirit side to it. And we're meant to we're meant to combine the two. Right. And if you don't learn that and you're just operating by the law, it's impossible for you to access the fullness of what marriage is about. Right. Impossible. Impossible. That's, that's a first Corinthians 2.14, actually. Yeah, my bad. Yeah, first Corinthians. But it's, it's like it's like you is right on like the carnal man can't receive the things of the spirit. Right. Right. But we've been going to the crown of man. OK, we say this about marriage as well. Marriage is a spiritual endeavor. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's spiritual in nature. It's spiritual first. But we've been trying to experience it and pull the life out of it and have all that it's supposed to be. Through carnal means. But it's a spiritual experience. Right. Mm-hmm. And if you don't if you don't want to have anything to do with spirituality and God, then you're going to always fall short in experiencing that which that which God is intended for you to experience in marriage, which we know to be the intimacies, the pleasures, the power and the purpose of oneness. Mm-hmm. Marriage isn't the end. It's the means to get to the end, the ultimate end for God. And we have to see this because we also say this, right? We got mm-hmm. lots of stuff we say <laughs> that people don't say. Marriage is about the mandate. Mm-hmm. Well, what's the mandate? The, the original mandate God placed upon man to, to um, replenish be fruitful, replenish, subdue, have dominion. I'm missing one. Um, what am I missing? How am I missing it? It says be fruitful. Multiply. Multiply. I'm missing right. multiply, right? And mm-hmm. the multiply, right? So, so <clears throat> when God gave man that mandate, he put the male man on the earth first. Then he said, this ain't good. He can't mm-hmm. fulfill the mandate by himself. Right. Which speaks to the power and importance and the value of the woman. Mm-hmm. He says, he needs he need somebody to help him. He needs right. to help me. Man, I can't go into what that means. I can't go into help me. <laughs> so, so what, what what would you say? Well, I, I guess I, I I know what you would say, but basically, <laughs> I, 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 gave, I gave a guy a ride. <laughs> you gotta act like you, you gotta act like you gotta act like you interviewed me. Well, like you yeah, okay. So, so <laughs> I, I get I gave a guy a ride today, and yeah. and you know I, I talked to him a little bit about um, you know marriage mastery and and. Um, you know what, what what the purpose of marriage is and and his his mindset was um he had never he had never thought about being married because he was more focused on his career mm-hmm. and secondly it was difficult for him to trust the intentions of someone knowing how much wealth he had he had accrued mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and and from that standpoint i i, I said to him i said oh, god that's just Right. So, so I, I wanted to ask so you about that because like, th- there's a lot of that going around where, where people are just, they're, they're scared of the intentions mm-hmm. of, you, you know, what, that, you know what I would do? The first thing I would do is solve that issue mm-hmm. is get him to identify as a lover. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. See, that's his problem. He hasn't identified as a lover. Right. Because when you, a lover, listen, is not listen, selfish. He ain't selfish. And they give. They long, listen, they, they long uh, listen, to I, give. I, 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 you I know? want you to know how much, I want you to know how much money I have. I want you to know how much I'm willing to mm-hmm. serve you. I'm willing to give to you. I'm willing to buy you. I'm willing to ser- I'm, whatever. Right. Like, like, so he, he hasn't identified as a lover. See, he's right on the, in, in the, in the perfection of the way God had to be done. It would be for the man to be established in what it is God's called him to do first. Mm-hmm. Right. God did that for Adam. That's, that's the model. Right. Right. Now, now he's to the point where he realizes, wait, well, he would realize, wait, I can't do this by myself. I need somebody to come and help me. 
Somebody to come and submit mm-hmm. to me. I think that's, Somebody I to think come that's to what gets me. taken away is, is people are so are, are so programmed now to be independent and do it on my own. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just for this, just for the 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 sake of being able to say I did mm-hmm. it by myself or nobody helped me or whatever, or mm-hmm. being scared that someone's gonna come in and try to take what they have. Yeah, and, right. and, and that's okay. Right? As you're mm-hmm. saying, like like a lover wants to I want to do for you. Yeah. 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 Right, that's the issue. Is him identifying as a lover? Mm-hmm. Now that now that I identify love, that's easy. That's that's easy. That's easy. Right. Like 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 mm-hmm. I, I I built this to be able to care for you. Yeah, and I was mm-hmm. ready to say for them to have that that divorce culture mindset of I made all this money, I don't want to. You know, why did you make it up. if you don't want to? Right, if you don't want to share, share it with right. anyone, you right. know, why did you make all of this money in the first place? Because yeah. It's, it's about, about sharing it. the wealth right. that you've earned. Right. It's yeah. not about taking it. It's a matter of, it's a matter of, as a husband, the ideal situation is to, is to be in the place that God has called you to be and building wealth. Right. And now, now a lover needs money to love. Mm-hmm. Really. Lovers need wealth to love. Right. To love to the degree that they want to love. That's the idea. Yeah. Behind. Is, is, is God wants us to be wealthy as, as, as husbands and as wives so that we can love like we're supposed to love. Mm-hmm. You can't love. Poverty and marriage was never meant to go together. Well, like, poverty is not even, it's not even the will of God in the first place. Like that's, right, that's all right. demonic. That's mm-hmm. all the devil. That's all. He is poverty, right? He was, he was, he was impoverished when he decided to try to overthrow God mm-hmm. and he lost all that God, all the splendor and glory God gave him. So he mm-hmm. became poverty. And now he, all he wants to do is make everybody else like him. So mm-hmm. poverty is a direct derivative of who he is as a person. Mm-hmm. So when we talk about when we talk about a husband building and now bringing his wife into what he's built to help him. Now, what what she what is she going to do? What is she going to do when he pulls her into what he's already built? What's she going to do? She's going to multiply. She's going to multiply. That's what I mean, she's going to multiply. Yeah. Again, he just don't know better. Well, I thought about something that you said. Um, I think it was two. Two, it may have been three podcasts ago, but you you talked about how um, people people nowadays are dating for compatibility. They're dating for for all of these measure measurables that divorce culture has kind of brought into the into the forefront and said if these things match up, this is a good match for you, right? Mm-hmm. It's it's not necessarily the person that God has for you, right. and if we are if we are connected the way that we're supposed to be to the source, mm-hmm. right? We'll get that answer as to whether or not this is the person for me. Right. Right. You knew it was me. Right. Like you, you didn't even have to think about it. You knew it was me. Right. right. But with without that. Right. We, we would have just been dating and right. it just would have been based on compatibility. Right. You know what I mean? And if the numbers didn't line up, then guess what? <laughs> you ain't the one. <laughs> right. right. What, what, and, and the order of what you just said is, is, is perfect. Like, like it, it goes, it starts with. You knowing that's the one God has for you, whether I, whether, whether we're compatible or not, because the solution to, to incompatibility is love. Mm -hmm. That's the solution. Love is pre-programmed to make us compatible. Cause once I find out what you like and what you don't like, then I decide, well, I'm not going to do what she don't like and what, or what, or I'm not going to do what she don't like and I'm going to give her what she like. Right. Right. Right? Once she decides, that's what love, that's what love Mm -hmm. does. That's what loving does. Right. That's what loving is. Right. We, we will come together. We will come together mm-hmm. and we will love and we will, we will grow to love the same things. Mm-hmm. That's the idea of oneness. But you don't go, people don't go into dating with oneness in mind. Mm. They go into dating with saying, I'm going to be who I'm going to be. And you got to love me for me. That's right. silly. Mm-hmm. You go, so you, you're not going to grow from this point on. <laughs> right. Are you going, are you going to always be and think the way you think? No. So why, why you got to love me for me? This is who I am. You right. don't even know who you are. But that's big right. in the counseling field, Pop. It's silly. That's big it in the counseling it is, field. But it's silly. Right. <laughs> that's what they teach. Love me for me. Right. Who right. are you? Right. <laughs> who are you? Yeah. Do you even know who you are? Yeah. Right. Talking about love me for me. You don't even know right. who you are. It's going to change in a few years. And that's, anyway. and maybe, I was about to say, but if you operate on a faith-based relationship, you'll understand that as you grow in love, you'll be growing as a person as well. So you, you're ever changing. Yep. And your love should be increasing and abounding, not just staying the same like a flat land. Right. You know, right. people, people. What we have to see is the futility in the divorce based culture and mm-hmm. the divorce. It's, it's just futile when you think about. But but the unrenewed mind, that's the key. The unrenewed mm-hmm. mind won't recognize those things. Right. Mm-hmm. Only the unrenewed mind. 
the mind, only the renewed mind, the mind that's that's saturated in the word of God. We're talking about faith-based men. I, I'm, I get I get folks outside the faith. But the the you can be, and we talked about this on Wednesday, you can be saved. I'm talking about I love the Lord. Go to church every Sunday, pay all your time. But if your mind isn't renewed, you'll still think like you're unsaved. And you'll be able to, and you'll receive. The natural man cannot receive the things right. of the spirit. Right. The spiritual man, the, 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 the natural man can't receive the revelations of the spirit. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, he, it, the Bible says it's foolishness to him. It don't make sense. Right. It's foolishness to him. Yeah. That's why, that's why Jesus stressed it in his ministry, repentance, which means to return to the original way of thinking. In other words, renew your mind. Paul picks it up in Romans and says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may know what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. You can't know what, you can't know what marriage is supposed to be and how you're supposed to function as a heroic husband in marriage if your mind isn't renewed. Right. And we run into the folks that's mind isn't renewed, that's in some cases anti-God and learning how to counsel them and then bringing that back over to the church and wondering why our divorce rate is just high as that because it's not a faith-based marriage. Mm -hmm. And we have to get back to what what that looks like. What Mm -hmm. is that? And we've been talking about that the last week and a half, I guess two weeks in our Coffee in the Morning Club and we talk about it here. And and it's just it's just important for us I was in I was in a conversation today with um somebody over at the over the, at the baby shower and um Quack introduced me to a friend from work. Mm-hmm. He said he'd been telling him telling him about us and what we were doing. And so I was talking to him and uh he 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 and he and his um girlfriend, you know, they're talking about marriage. Mm-hmm. And so I said, Man, marriage is easy. <laughs> he said, I ain't never heard. It. He said, You you believe that? I said, yeah. I teach it too. I said, yeah. I said, I said, he said, you believe that? I said, yeah, yeah, I believe that. He said, man, I ain't never heard that. I said, that's why you start that's why you gotta start hanging around us. Mm-hmm. He said, I ain't never heard that. Well, guess what? How does faith come? By, by hearing. hearing. By hearing. Yeah. By hearing. Mm-hmm. A faith-based marriage comes by hearing faith-based language. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you don't hear faith-based language, then you're gonna have divorce-based language. Right. And you're not gonna believe marriage is easy. Mm-hmm. How can it not be? Jesus ain't gonna give us nothing to do that's hard. Right. But we, we, we there's a process. And, mm-hmm. and I said, I said, bro, I'll take you through the process. And you don't worry about it, man. It should be easy, man. Right? But as you said, most men are, there's a fear. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. you don't have to have a whole lot to fear mm-hmm. losing what little you have. Right. And, and, and really, so I was thinking about this. Everything, and we were talking about music the other day, right? And, and you asked me about how, how sound, or the, the the purpose of sound applies to the music, you know, in mm-hmm. today's age, right? And and we talked about how everything is surrounded around the vibe. Mm-hmm. You know, everybody's trying to catch a vibe with music. It's 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 producing an atmosphere that's conducive to feeling your you know, you, you connect to the music through the feeling that it gives you, right? Mm-hmm. And everything that is in this realm is designed to bring about a feeling out of you, right? Mm-hmm. It even teaches you that love mm-hmm. is a feeling. And right. if I'm not getting that feeling with you after 10 years of marriage, then, well, I don't then love guess you. what? <laughs> the love is gone and it's time to go. That's, that's foolishness. It's silly, it's silly, everything is based yeah. off of feelings, it's right? Silly, and and right. if we're not, if, if people are not hearing, like you said, that love is not a feeling, right. if they're not hearing that marriage is easy, they're not hearing about the skills, the, the, the skills to, to, to master marriage. All of that stuff is going to boil up to the love is gone. Love is gone. Right. I mean, there's even, there's even a song about that. The love is gone. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, but the idea of knowing love and, 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 uh, we just finished. We got a, we got a devotional coming out about love. That's, it's, it's man. You got to get it. Um, mm-hmm. and we go into what love is. The devotional sense around what love is. Mm-hmm. And we, we have to know what it is if we're going to operate and function in it. Mm-hmm. We have to know what love is. And, and. Sit. Can you give us a snippet of well, what one, love one is? One of the snippets. Why, one, why okay. you say snippet? A snippet. <laughs> <laughs> one, one of the snippets is. Trying to keep, is, us, keep it uh, short. Which one I want to give? We want to give them this. That love is a law. Mm-hmm. Right? Love operates the same way the law of gravity operates. Mm-hmm. Right? But we have to understand the importance of law and God's intent behind law. God's intent behind law was centered around consistency, mm-hmm. ease in operation, multiple Water. manifestation. Like order. when God order, order. Mm-hmm. like when God put laws in place, He put laws in place so that one, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be hard. Mm. Loving wouldn't be hard. How hard do we have to work to stay on nail to the earth? Not hard at not all. Not hard at all, mm-hmm. right? It's not hard at all, right? How hard, how hard do we have to do to um, 
to, to breathe. Mm. That's not it's hard natural. though. Mm-hmm. It's natural mm-hmm. because it's all based on laws. Mm-hmm. It's right. all based on laws. Mm-hmm. Everything is based on law. Everything in the kingdom of God is based on laws. Mm-hmm. Laws govern the operation. God's, laws govern manifestation. God's, mm-hmm. Laws govern ease of operation. Mm-hmm. So when we understand love as a law, if I can get you to enter into the law of love, done deal. Mm-hmm. It's right. over. The actions of love manifest effortlessly. Yep. It's like they say about my boy Steph. Steffortless. It was oh, steffortless. Steffortlessly. It was de- he shoot that thing. Steffortlessly. He shoot it steffortless. It's easy. It's easy. <laughs> love it. It's easy. But you got to yield to the law of love. Mm-hmm. You got to enter into the law of love. Well, how do I enter into the law of love? One, by identifying as a lover. Understanding what the actions of love is, embracing the the, the government of love. Mm-hmm. Love is a government, man. We can't. We got so much stuff y'all bringing out. Right. We can't get into it. love. Well, is a let's government. stick to what we were at. So right, right. <laughs> pull it in. Praise God. Right, going into it. it. Love is right. right. out. You still with but, us? But love oh, yeah. is a government. <laughs> yes. We got to see that love comes in as a government to govern your actions and your behavior. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. So, so, so yeah, faith based marriage. We gotta have a foundation. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus, our foundation is Jesus had a faith based marriage. Mm-hmm. Right. Most folks ain't ever thought about that. Mm-hmm. Most folks ain't never looked at that. No, but yeah. he had a faith. Jesus' marriage was, is, and will ever be a faith based marriage with the church. Right. His marriage with the church is, is, is strictly faith based. Uh, he was motivated by love. Oh, so so the so the so the um the components of a faith based marriage is love, hope, faith. Right. So Jesus was motivated by love. He 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 endured the cross. So hope is what sustained him and what gave him the ability to endure the process of reconnecting or becoming one with his bride. And then faith. He operated by faith. Jesus lived by faith. I know that's tough for some folks to accept. He didn't know everything like people think he knew everything. And he didn't, he didn't, he had to hear from God just like we have to hear from God. He had to read his Bible. Mm-hmm. He had to hear Ramos. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. He said that by experience. He mm-hmm. didn't just read that. And that's not one theory. Well, he lived that. Mm-hmm. So everything that Jesus did, he did by faith. And his, what is faith again? Faith is God's word. In, in your, your spirit, spirit. Right? right? David says, mm-hmm. I desire truth in my inward part. In my mm-hmm. hidden part, thou shalt make me to know wisdom. David said, thy word that I hid in my heart. See, the word is designed to enter into the spirit of man, mm-hmm. right? And, and once it entered into the spirit of man, now it becomes the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now it materialized. It becomes a real person and personality, right? So, so that is what faith is. So a faith-based marriage is operated on the principles of love, hope, and faith. Mm-hmm. Not a divorce-based marriage which, is, which operate on the principles of fear, despair, and unbelief. Mm-hmm. They don't, they just, they just, you can't, you can only get so much out of a marriage mm-hmm. when they're based on those two, on, on those three things. Right. So Jesus had a, he had a faith-based marriage, right? Jesus also both modeled husbandry and wifery. Mm-hmm. That's another aspect of what he modeled. Leadership, taking responsibility for fixing relationship and being in subjection to and honoring his father's will. He modeled both of those. So I can, I can teach from Jesus' life a wife how to be a wondrous wife. I can also instruct a husband how to be a wonder, a heroic husband. Because Jesus' life both modeled both of those. Right, his marriage was enacted based on love, hope, and faith. Um, love was his motivation. Hope enabled him to endure the cross, and faith is what he believed and he read and what he spoke. Um, and he operated on all those three levels, right? And so, when we talk about that, we we went into Friday, which what I want to get to is when you really break down the um, the, the the mechanics and and really mm-hmm. uh, the practicality of operating uh, in a faith based marriage is based off three things: decrees, declarations, and confession. Mm-hmm. Right, that's an aspect of it. Um, the scripture says it like this in Job. He says, "Thou shalt decree a thing, and it shall be established." When I look at my wife, when I, when you look at your wife, when your wife looks at you as a husband, there should be certain things she decrees. You talk about compatibility, right? Mm-hmm. Instead of instead of trying to date, which is futile and endless, to try and date to see whether or not we're compatible. First thing is you hear from God, right? And then you become compatible, yep. right? You work to become compatible. That's the mm-hmm. idea of marriage. Oneness is to become compatible. Mm -hmm. We're trying to become compatible before we make the commitment. You never get compatibility without the commitment. Right. That's how it's supposed to go. You need Mm -hmm. to make the commitment first, then you become compatible. Jesus, what if Jesus had looked at us when we was his enemies, when we was living in sin, when we (laughs) had enmity enmity with him? What if he looked at us and said, You got to get right before you. Oh, we ain't compatible. (laughs) Right. Right. God, before I die for them, they got to get right. They, they ain't enough for compatibility for me to die for them. <laughs> Bible says, love, love your wife as Christ, love the church. Right. 
salvation wouldn't even be it wouldn't be possible mm-hmm. right yeah. like salvation is a marriage mm-hmm. our our marriages should be based upon the principles of salvation man I ain't compatible with the you see how they act <laughs> I ain't compatible with them I ain't finna I ain't finna die for them folks <laughs> I ain't finna give all, I ain't finna share none of my stuff with them. We ain't compatible. That thing might not work. <laughs> it's silly. Yeah. I ain't talking about the unsaved folk. I'm talking about the saved folk thinking right. like that. Right. It's silly. Mm-hmm. Well, we wasn't compatible. You just were not compatible. You're ignorant. <laughs> you know better. It just means not to know. Yeah. Ignorant mm-hmm. means not to know. Right. We are ignorant to a certain degree. Right. The mm-hmm. goal is to be less ignorant. Than the average person. <laughs> right. That's ignorant, more in power. Right. It's just it's, so. So when we talk about faith-based marriage, yeah, it's based upon it's based upon hearing, believing, speaking. That's mm-hmm. what, that's a faith life. It's about hearing, believing, and speaking. When it comes to my marriage, I have to hear what God has said about Leslie and to Leslie. I have to hear that because that's telling me who she is. Mm-hmm. I was in the conversation the other day. Someone, well, well, they, they, they got to love me for who I am. I said, well, who are you? I'm not talking about an Adam. Who are you in Christ? Mm-hmm. Most counselors counsel people based off of who they are in Adam. Right. Not who they are in Christ. Yep. Mm-hmm. And they start saying, well, you, well, well, you got to relate to her like this because this is who she is. But they talk about who she is in Adam. Right. But if she ain't, if they don't recognize who she is in Christ, They'll never get it right. Right. They can't give it to you right. Yeah. Because they're instructing you based off of something that you're not. Right. But this is where we go on to get information. Right. Then you end up hopeless. You mm-hmm. end up settling, or you end up leaving. Yeah. Mm-hmm. One of the, one of those three. Yeah. And it's just it's just to the point now where we've gotten to the point to where enough is enough, man. I mean, you got to say, say what it is. People right. either embrace it or they run from it. Right. Right. They, 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 they escape the divorce culture. And that's what we, that's what we want to do. I think mm-hmm. the last week I talked about our mission is to, is to, is to snatch as many marriages as possible out of the divorce culture and put them into the culture of oneness that we've created in our coffee in the morning club mm-hmm. that we've created in our gospel love movement and, and to have them come in and be saturated, be saturated with hearing what a faith based marriage is. Everything begins by hearing. So really quick, we got three minutes left. There, if you go back to the last slide, there was, uh, can you just talk about uh, he protected? You got the word religion up there. Can 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 you go into yeah. detail about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So 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 three things that characterizes a the love that Christ had for His church. First thing is was He pursued her. He pursued us like He wooed us. He loved us first. Mm-hmm. Husbands husbands responsibility is to love first, no matter what. It's to love first, forgive first, thank first, you know, kiss first, make up first, first, right. Then she then her responsibility is to multiply or be free to love or love me back free. Don't hold me. Don't hold back. Now, if I'm going to love you first. Don't hold back. nothing. Right. Right. That's how that works. But you got to love first. Right. right? Then I see he said he protected the church. Right. And so and then I put religion, religion, religion exposes. It doesn't protect. Right. Mm. Religion is designed to disempower, not empower. Right. So when we talk about protecting you, well, how God protects us is by empowering us. Right. Mm-hmm. He gives us what we need. He in, enlightens the eyes of our understanding so that we know. Right. Right. So that's how he in, pr- protects us by empowering us through knowledge and through knowing. Well, religion disempowers you. It holds back from you. It holds back insight and information. It keeps it for itself so that it can control you. Mm-hmm. Right. That's the idea of religion. Religion so is tied to the law. It's tied to the law. When we talk right. about that, well, religion, religion, I mean, uh, uh, he protected us from religion. Uh, he would, the example that comes to mind would be the woman that was caught in the act of adultery. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the boys, but listen, listen, Moses said, be hit with the rocks. Moses said, pick up rocks, bust in the hand. That's the law. Stone. That's the law. I, I believe the Bible says stone. stoner. Says stone. Yes. Stone. <laughs> I like to say it like that. I know stone. you do. But he just said for he said he said I like Jesus. his version better. <laughs> just for clarity. <laughs> Jesus said, Jesus said, Jesus, Jesus didn't say nothing to the boy. But I said, he won't, he, he's going to start writing in the ground. He wasn't paying the boy no attention. He said, wait, wait. <laughs> If anybody, anybody around this in your crew is without sin, let them throw the first rock. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He was protecting them from religion. Mm-hmm. See, husband protects. Mm-hmm. Boys start walking off. Right. Boys start walking off. Ah, man, I'm out of here, man. <laughs> man, I'm out of here, man. I messed up last night. <laughs> I messed up this morning. I'm out of here. Boys start walking away. Then he loved her. Oh, he loved her. I wish we had time to go. He loved her. Mm-hmm. He loved her. He says, he says, he says, woman. Were thine accusers? 
In other words, you're free. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're free. He comforted her. He says, now listen, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to eliminate all condemnation. Now sin no more. Right? See, condemnation only leads to more sin. But when he stripped away her accusers and the condemnation, now he says, sin no more. So he empowered her not to sin anymore. Mm-hmm. Right? Husbands protect from religion, protect from her past. That's the other thing. When he told her to sin no more, he was protecting her from her past. Right. Because the tendency will be for her to go back into her holotry. Right. Or her whoredoms. But he says, no, sin no. He protected her from her past. He delivered her from her past. So, so three things husbands protect their wives from is religion, their past, and, and, and what was the third thing? And poverty. Poverty. Right. Protects mm-hmm. them from poverty. Mm-hmm. Right. Spiritual poverty, soul is poverty, economic poverty, physical poverty. He protects them. He brings her into an abundance. Which hence your, your example about your boy this morning yeah, talking about his yeah, money. Yeah. Listen, listen I'm, I'm looking for somebody to bring into this thing, right? Bring into your wealth. Mm-hmm. So um, when the Lord told me, when the Lord, imagine if the Lord, when the Lord told me to call Leslie, tell her that I love her, that I'm going to be there. I was playing professional football at the time. Mm-hmm. What if I said, wait, wait, Lord, wait, Lord, wait. You, you, you know you know how much money I'm going to make this year? <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you sure you want to, you sure, you sure I want to bring into this? <laughs> It's silly. It just gets silly. Anyway. Right, anyway. Right. Um, but the point is, those are the three things that a husband does. That's what Jesus did to his bride. He protected him from religion, from the past, and from poverty. And then he provided salvation, so and he provides love. Right. right? So there's, there's so much, man. There's so much. And we we have, you know, y'all give me 30 minutes to throw all this stuff at y'all. <laughs> and it's it's so much that we have to what I do want to get to this part. I do want to get to this part. That that the practicality of um our our marriage is, is, is one thing we have to understand is that we're at war, mm-hmm. right? If you're married, saved, unsaved, marriage and the institution of marriage is under attack. It I'm talking about from is. every angle, from all kinds of angles. Mm-hmm. It's under attack. And so we, we're at war. We're at war as the church of the living God. We're at war to protect the institution of a God ordained, a faith based marriage. Mm-hmm. So we have to, we have to have weapons that are that are congruent to the warfare that we're in. Mm. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mm. mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imagination, and every high thing that tries to exalt itself against the knowledge. What we know of how God ordained marriage to be. That's the warfare. The divorce culture is trying to attack the knowledge that that God has revealed in the word of God of what marriage is supposed to be. Right. Our warfare is to combat that. The weapons of our warfare is to is to is to come up with the is to use the methodology that God has given us to go to war with, which is our words. Our words is the, is the, is the weapon of choice that God has given man to fight off anything that tries to come against, in this particular case, the institution of a faith-based marriage. Mm-hmm. How do we do that? And so I gave an example of some of the things that Leslie and I did in our foundational stages of our marriage, of how we quoted the scripture, how we read uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 every night before we went to bed, how I started reading over her uh, Proverbs 31, mm-hmm. how we started confessing things and declaring things and prayers and declarations. I mean, I mean, we did that for years, right? Which is, and we've been able to experience the fruit of, the la- of that over the last 27, 26 years of our life, right? Well, we talked about how we gave, I gave them some husband's decrees, right? Um, oh, I got to mention this. I got to mention this. Mm. This is important. I'm sorry. When Avi's away, Damaris will play. Gonna play. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this word of wisdom insane. came to me as I was meditating mm-hmm. this, right? In the culture of love. No, that's most important. And I'm, and I'm really, I'm really thinking that we're going to launch into this in our coffee in the morning club because everything about marriage is dependent upon the culture of marriage is placed in. Mm. The outcome of your marriage is dependent on whether or not it's in the culture of love or the culture of fear. Mm-hmm. Is either in the, in the, in the culture of oneness or a culture, a culture of individuality? Like, what's the culture of your marriage? What's the, the, the divorce culture or the culture of oneness? Which one is in, right? Most marriages are rooted in a divorce culture because they don't know better. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's not, it's not, it's not necessarily your fault, but it's now your responsibility to do something about it. Right. Right. So the divorce, the, the culture matters. The, this word came to me in the culture of love the impact that God's spoken word has on me personally when God speaks a word to you and I we hear mm-hmm. the right word and the impact that it has on us the empowering impact the, the, the renewing of the mind that it has on us the change of action that it has on us the change of feeling all of those stuff all of that stuff that when the word of God is spoken to you how it impacts you the same effect should happen when a husband speaks to his wife and when a wife speaks to her husband when he releases something out of the spirit to her 
It should have that same impact. But if it's not in the culture of love, because the truth is only effective when it's spoken in love. Right. The truth is only effective when it's, put, when it's planted in love. So the culture is important. So we have to show people how to, exp how to, how to establish a culture of love because the culture of love is transformational. Mm -hmm. Right, the culture of love, it's, it's, it, the word doesn't return void. It's prosperous. Right. And the culture of love will, once it gets into the heart and mind of a man, of a person, it'll, it'll, it'll bring a newness and a freshness of life. Mm -hmm. With that, once you have established a culture of love, now the things you decree as a husband will flourish and prosper and cause you as a husband to be all God has called you to be and will cause the wife who you're speaking to cause her to be all she's called to be. So I'm going to run through these declarations, then we'll be done, right? Mm -hmm. Husband's okay. declaration. I'm created in the image and likeness of God. I'm created in the likeness and image of God. God is love, therefore I am a lover. I was created to love. I was born again to love. I am a lover. I will love my wife, and here's how we do that, right? When I when I confess this, I put Leslie's name in it. I will, I love, will love Leslie. I will love Leslie like Christ loved the church. I will give my life over to loving Leslie. I will set my love apart. I will set my love upon Leslie. No, I will set Leslie apart from all others. I will wash Leslie's fears away and cleanse and purify her soul of all infirmities with my words. I will present Leslie to myself and to everyone as a glorious, I love this word glorious, it means a ray of life giving light, a glorious wife, the glorious wife that she is. Leslie is holy. Leslie is, a good, is my good thing. Leslie is the most valuable person in my life. Leslie increases my value. I will love Leslie all the days in my life and I will be and we will be heirs together and live life more abundantly together. Amen. Those, those are the declarations mm -hmm. we make <laughs> over our wives. We make those declarations. Right. The Bible says this. We, I quoted Joe where he says, he says, thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be established. In Psalm chapter two, Jesus, this, this is a depiction of Jesus life. He says, I will declare the decree. Thou art my son. Today, I, today have I begotten thee, right? Mm -hmm, so right. we declare what God has decreed. Mm -hmm. I've heard God say these things. So I'm mm -hmm. going to decree and declare them over my spouse. Mm -hmm. That's how that works. No, let me get to the woman's, right? Mm. <sighs> Why have you got something to say too? I'm ticking right? you down. <laughs> the wife decrees. I am created in the image and likeness of God. God is, God is love. Therefore, I am a lover. I was created in love. I was created to love. I was born again to love. I am a lover. Lord, Make my love to increase in the bound. I'm going to use Caitlin in this case towards you. Make my love increase in the bound towards Aramis, even as your love increases and abounds toward me. I will desire Aramis. I will, yeah, I will desire Aramis. My heart will long for his presence. I will set my love upon Aramis and he will secure me. Aramis will value me above all others because I know him intimately. I will call on Aramis and he will answer me. I will call, I will call, I will be with Aramis in times of trouble to help him overcome those troubles. I will be satisfied with Aramis together with, I will be satisfied with Aramis together. No, I will be satisfied with Aramis's love together. We will experience and enjoy our great salvation. It will, I will subject myself to Aramis, to Aramis's culture of love. I will win. I will win Aramis in, in the way of righteousness with my reverence and obedience towards God and my husband without nagging or being contentious. These are decrees. These are decrees. These are declarations. These are confessions that we need to be making <laughs> on a daily basis. This is the foundation of a faith-based marriage. That last line, without nagging and being contentious, That's it hard. is better to live in the corner of a rooftop <laughs> than with a brawling. <laughs> And contentious of a woman. mansion that is a going high, man. I'm and getting away from that thing. <laughs> I'm going know. high with a brawling contentious woman. Man, I'm going high, man. Man, I'm out of here. I'm yeah. sitting. I'm, no, you know how that look like? I got to sit in the car for 15 minutes before I go in the house. Yeah. I stay at work. I make up. I make up reasons to stay at work. Right. That's that's that scripture coming alive. Mm -hmm. I make up reasons to stay at work. Right. I make up reasons to leave the house early. Mm -hmm. It take me 15, 20 minutes to take out the garbage. Because I'm trying to hide. Right. This thing is serious, man. This thing is real. It is. Right? And with those where, where can we find these statements? These, these are transformative statements. People should have a place that they can see them and say them every day. I'm glad you asked that, Aramis. We are working on that. And I have been, in the spirit of covering my husband, I have been, you know, gently nudging him to send me his copy. No, you, you missed that one. Yes, you missed that so one. He's that on my coffee in one club. 
But no. he so yeah, 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 I can, well. we can put no, it no, in no, print. No, 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 no. Oh, right, right. Yeah, right. No, 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 no. He, Which ask one? the question again, son. I'll answer for you correctly. Well, <laughs> no. you know what? I'll answer but for you. But in the on. meantime, <laughs> come on, come on. <laughs> join us if you want to hear this yes. more on a daily basis. Yeah, that's what he's doing. Yeah. Join us <laughs> on right. three days a week. Monday, Wednesday, Fridays. Mm-hmm. Go to coffeeinthemorningclub.com. Sign up. All we, all we need is your name, your email, your phone number. That's it. So, and then you can get rolling in there. So, join us for Coffee in the Morning Club. I didn't want to say credit card because I was like, we need that too. But they got to pay for it. You got to pay for it. Right. Pay for but, but right give now, you the six sessions, sessions for free. Yeah, the sessions are free right now. We're giving the first six free. We're going to give you a chance to say no. The sessions are free right now. Guarantee you, you won't six. say no. Right. One is enough. Guarantee you're gonna hear something. Mm-hmm. One, right. one is gonna transform you. Right. Period. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. So, so yeah. So yeah. <laughs> so but but to Leslie's point, we did just finish our devotional. Yes. And uh, we just started. We started our our. Uh, we're gonna have, we're putting together a 31 day declaration mm-hmm. for husbands and wives to declare things. Um, you know, in their marriage, and and that's that's how it starts, man. That's how it starts. Mm-hmm. So. And with that being said, thank you for yeah, joining us go. on another episode of When Is Wine Gospel Love Edition. And don't forget to subscribe, click and click the bell and like.